What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the European Volleyball Show. My name is Rob St. Clair and a very special guest, the libero from Zaksa Kedrus in Kojle, live from his apartment where we frequently see him on his own YouTube channel, Mr. Eric Shoji. Welcome to the show. It's great to have you, man. Thank you very much. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me. Uh, you are in a very busy time of your volleyball career right now, as really they all are. But uh, you played a match literally last night in the Plus Liga Finals. Yeah. Uh, still at least one more match to go. And and then yes. just looming after that is the Champions League Super Finals uh, next Sunday, May 22nd. If you people watching, if you don't already know that the Champions League Super Finals are coming up, uh, you're going to know by the end of this show, especially from Eric's perspective. So uh, tell us about your your the last week or two, like since the Plus League of Finals started, how is your team balancing the, the preparation for this fi for Poland knowing that you still have another match in Champions League to prepare for after it's all over. It's probably pretty crazy. Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, for those people who don't know, we're currently in the Polish Plus Liga Finals right now. It's a best of five series. Um, we are currently up 2-1, so we played three matches. It's about three days in between each match, so we're playing twice a week. And if this goes to five matches, we'll be playing on May 17th, I believe which is five days before the Champions League final. So right now, honestly, we're not even talking about Champions League final. It's all about the Polish final. It's a lot of rest, a lot of recovery, a lot of rehab and treatment, and just trying to be fresh for these matches. And then once this kind of winds, winds down and finishes up, preparation for the final. So we'll see how that goes. Right. And so it was really interesting because I talked to Matej Kaziski on last week's show who plays for Trentino and will be one of your opponents in the Super Finals. Their schedule couldn't be more different. They they ended up not making it to the finals in Italy and they've been off for the last probably two weeks. They'll have a huge amount of time to prepare for that one match whereas you guys will have a week at most. I'm curious... Uh, and I asked Matei the same question, but from your side, how do you optimize the schedule of preparing for a match like that, especially when it's just one match? It's not a series. It's one match for the entire championship. Yeah, I mean, I think there's pros and cons to both sides. On one end, Trento has a lot more rest maybe than we have. I They probably took three or four days off, can kind of hit the weight room, get a little bit physically stronger, and you know, prepare for us and go dive all, all the way in. We don't really have that luxury, but at the same time, we're battling it out every three nights and we're in this competition mode and able to play matches, which definitely can prepare you for that match. So it's, it's, it's definitely like maybe your opinion, whatever you want to think is better. I think it's completely different what we're doing. And I guess we'll see May 22nd what's going to happen. I mean, we might have three days to prepare for Trento while they had almost a month. That is a huge difference. And when it comes down to just one match to decide it all, that dynamic is going to be really interesting. So speaking of one match to decide it all, your team, Zaxa, is the reigning champions of this Champions League tournament. Uh, last year, they went on just a miraculous all-time run to win it all, which you were watching from afar, having been playing in Russia. So you coming over yep. to Zaxa in this off season. What has it been like for you preparing for this tournament in particular because of where a lot of the guys on your team were last year? They've been through it before. They have they were in that final, they were in that situation, and then they, they replaced just a couple pieces in the offseason, yourself included. So what's been your impression of Zox's approach to this Champions League? Well, obviously, I don't know exactly what their approach was last year, but I can say that the guys have been great in kind of sharing their experiences and knowing how we need to prepare for these matches. It's not anything different maybe than I've experienced before. It's just 100% focus, 100% effort, and just competing as hard as we can. I think I'll say it now. We were in the pool of death in the oh, Champions League group were stage. Were you ever? <laughs> Um, you know, we played Lube Civitanova, who just won the Italian League last night, and we also played Lokomotiv twice in Siberia, who got second in the Russian League. So we were, you know, very, very happy to get out of that pool. And then we hit the playoffs. We got a little bit, I'll say, lucky to not have to play that quarterfinal match against Dinamo. But, you know, it's, it's a lot of preparation um, with your body, your mind, and, and diving in to prepare for those matches. And the guys have been great in helping with that. 
I'm glad you brought up what you guys went through in the group stage because you're absolutely right. That was the group of death, maybe more so than I've ever seen in Champions League before. Like there were three teams in that pool who could legitimately win the entire championship. And the, the way the travel worked out that you had to end up going to Siberia twice, the fact that you guys made it out of that pool and even have a chance to defend the title was a pretty huge achievement. So tell me about that time because I remember there was a block where your travel schedule was just ridiculous uh, between all, all the Champions League and Poland and all that. How do you manage that? How does how does your team manage all of that volleyball that you have to play and all of that travel? It's such a grind. How do you keep your top competitive level through all that? Oof, it's honestly a lot about your preparation and then a lot about the rest that you can get at any point in the day if you're on a flight, if you're in the hotel for 20 minutes, if you're on a bus. It's about that rest, the adjusting to time zones, your preparation, how you eat, how you fuel. It's it's everything that you know you you might think of. It, it's true, and it really comes down to that in those matches. Oh, I think you froze. I can, I can still see you and hear you. Oh yeah, Eric froze just for a second there. Hopefully that comes back in one second. We'll hopefully get that figured out. There we go. You got me my back. Bad, Eric? My bad. <laughs> no problem. Are we back? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Back. Perfect. Um, yeah. We were just talking about the travel and how we deal with it. It's just a lot of rest and recovery and, and diving into your opponent. So you can feel as prepared as possible because we were on the road for a long time, traveling to Italy, Slovenia and Russia. And it, it was a long, it was a long streak. I'll be honest, but, we made it through and you know things have been pretty good since then so tell me about the the feel in your team around defending this championship because last year as, as i'm sure you saw from watching from afar the, the run that this zaxa team went on beating i believe lube chivinova zenit kazan and then trentino again in that order last year to win like it was it was just an all-time champions league run but then they also had that interesting dynamic of not winning the plus liga like they, they, they won Champions League yeah. last year and didn't win the Polish domestic title. What has that, what sort of inspiration has that given to your team this year, having accomplished one huge thing last year, but not the other one? What's that vibe been like? You know, it. I don't know if there is a vibe. I Not that I could feel anyway. I know that there's been a lot of drive and a lot of focus in these guys to to win this final and, and to really kind of get a sort of revenge on Yastrzembia, who beat them in the Polish League final last season. Um, up until last night, we had won eight straight games against them, or seven straight matches. And then last night, they they took one from us. So it's I think it's just extra motivation to, to win the league and, and push hard and then focus on that one game. I don't I don't see any guys honestly focusing on Champions League final yet. So it, it, that that part is cool that we're we're grounded, we're staying at one match at a time, and and pretty present in the situation. That's impressive to be that locked in with like so much, so many high stakes yeah. games in such a short span of time. That's that's really impressive. And I want to yeah. It's tough. How much does the club and like the coaching staff, the trainers, just all the way top to bottom through the Zoxa organization, how, what what is the type of support like that you get from them to put you guys in the positions to do that, to just focus on the next game that you have? Yeah, there's a lot of support. This club, I think, does an amazing job. One, of just being a club and having the organization that they have. We can see year in, year in, year out, they're competing in Champions League, comp competing in the Polish League for medals almost every year. So hats off to the club for, for doing that. I think they're giving a lot of support. They're, they want feedback from the players. They're talking to the trainers, seeing what we can do to just be as fresh mentally and physically as possible because that's, I think, the mental battle is half of it at this point too. So they're doing a great job supporting us, making sure that we're in the in the best condition and, and spot to to win this next match, and then hopefully, and also the Champions League one. So tell me about your team in particular. You've got this this trio of wings: Lukas Kaczmada, Kamil Semenyuk, and Alexander Slivka. That that kind of the volleyball world fell in love with last year as Zaksa made that run, keeping all those pieces intact and the play style that Zaksa was able to develop this year. 
Tell me what those three guys have meant to this year's team, having been there for so long, even though a couple of the pieces changed. I think they're just the core of the team. I think they have held us really together for this entire year. Um, if those three are on, we're going to win. I'll just, I'll just say that we're probably going to win. Um, it always has, it hasn't happened every single time, but they're just so consistent. They're such great volleyball players. Um, they're not just good at spiking and serving their, their passers and their defenders. And the volleyball nerd in me is fan boying over them as well. Just being able to play with them and seeing the kind of plays that they can make day in and day out. So I'm a fan. I think they're just the core of our team and they're leading us. And, you know, hopefully we can get two more wins to win both titles. That that's that's well said. I am a huge fan of just everybody on the Zoxa team, and you included. Obviously, I've been watching your career since Stanford in 2010. <laughs> but uh, the an interesting thing that I've noticed about Zoxa and some of the other like really elite clubs in Europe, like the way that you construct a club team is not always the same in different leagues, different clubs, you know. But Zoxa somehow always puts together a group of guys that ends up being more than the sum of its parts if that makes sense. Some teams just go out and get the best available players yeah. at every position, but Zoxa always seems to develop a team, a team that, that they, they understand personalities and play styles and how to put it all together like that. Is that something that you notice and, and you feel? And how does that, like, how do they go about that? Is that a very intentional thing or am I just making that up? I think it's pretty intentional. You know, the, the, the transfer market is an interesting thing in professional volleyball because there's so much talent out there, but it truly is how you can balance that talent with kind of the team chemistry and how people fit together. Now, I know firsthand that David Smith, who's my neighbor upstairs, my national team member who also plays here with me in Zoxa, he was asked about me on a personal level before anything about my play style or how I played on the court. So Zoxa made sure that I was, you know, nice and worked hard and was able to fit in on a team and, and I don't know, friendly, basically, and a good teammate. So Zoxa made sure that that was the case before they even, even thought about the volleyball. I mean, you know, people know about the volleyball and kind of what you do, but it's more about your personality and how you can fit in with a team that they were concerned about. So that's interesting. And now this upcoming season, next season, I was asked about, out, about players and their personalities and their, ability to, to be a good teammate. So I think it's something they really stress and they put a big, big emphasis on, which I personally love. I think that's great. So I think that's how they've been able to compete, even though maybe we don't have the stars per se, but you know, we just fit really well together. And you could see that last year as well. Absolutely. That's very well said. And you brought up David Smith, and I wanted to ask about him because another guy who I've just loved watching his career, he's not the prototypical elite level middle blocker. He's not, you know, two meters and eight. He doesn't touch, oh, I, I don't know what it is in centimeters. He doesn't t touch like 12 foot two or four. <laughs> he, he doesn't like, you know, he, he's not that big, giant physical specimen, but he's so smart. He's so... He's so just on top of the game plan. He's such a good blocker. He is a surprisingly good passer and setter, as you've talked about when you've interviewed him before. Uh, tell us about Dave Smith and his impact on the Zoxa team. It seems like the perfect fit. Yeah, I think it's a great fit. It's why he's been here for three seasons now. He just fits perfectly into this system, kind of this middle blocker that is also a great volleyball player. Like you said, he can pass, he can play defense, he can set the crap out of the ball. And then he plays middle blocker, so he can obviously do, do those skills as well. So he fits in perfectly. He's just a slice and dice middle that gets it done. It's almost impossible to lock and dig him over and over again. So he's such a great player. And on top of that, as most of us know, he can't hear very well. Like he has a lot of hearing loss. He wears hearing aids, you know, every day during life and in volleyball. So for him to be at this level and to compete, you know, at the highest level possible with almost all of his hearing gone is, it's insane. It, it's, it's just crazy. unbelievable what the kinds of things he can do. 
He's so impressive. And you've done a great job on your YouTube channel with Dave about featuring and kind of putting a spotlight on what it is that he does go through to play at the level he plays at with significant, significant hearing loss. I actually I work in the hearing aid industry, funny enough, and I kind of hmm. I kind of know the severity of, of how of just yeah. how much hearing he has lost. And to, to be a an elite level like Olympic caliber athlete like that is, is incredible. I want to ask about Marcin Janusz. Yeah, I mean, I find, I, uh, sorry, yeah, please, I'll, please. I'm going to just give one more little story here. Um, before our second match of the finals here in Poland, in Yashembia, his hearing aid actually died. Really? So he had to take it out, and I believe it was his his right ear. I hope he doesn't mind me telling this story. He he just lost it completely. So when he doesn't have his hearing aids in, it's it's almost gone, his, his hearing entirely. But he still rocked it. He got MVP of the match. And that <laughs> is like hearing almost nothing on the court. So just all the praises to Dave, my neighbor who's upstairs right now. That is crazy. Because I was, I was so impressed by him in that second match that you guys won in five. It was a crazy match. He, he Wow, his hearing aid was out yeah. for that. That's an unbelievable story. My goodness. So yeah, At least at the start. At least at the start it was. Wow. Okay, so I, I want to ask about your setter, Marcin Janusz, because not a lot yeah. of not a lot of people know who this guy is just yet. He's filling the shoes of Benjamin Toniuti, who is just, uh, despite not so big stature, leaves very big shoes to fill, at, like replacing a starting setter. And you know, not, Janusz yes. hasn't seen that much national team run just yet, so maybe nobody quite knows how good this guy is um tell us about elvis as he's nicknamed and kind of a bit about his play style and what he's brought to your team this year yeah i mean if i had to describe elvis it would be like the silent assassin i think like or floats like a butterfly stings like a bee like he's so calm in everyday life he doesn't like get too high he never gets too low he's super stable like day in day out and then he just competes and he's a competitor and i love that about him and he's also just a great setter and has just delivered every single game pretty much um you know there's a lot of talk in poland about how we were gonna be able to replace some of these oxo players from last season uh, me included but i think people were more talking about janusz because he hadn't been on the national team and he has basically no experience on the international stage. So it was a lot about what is Janusz going to do? What is Janusz going to do? What is Janusz going to do? And he has risen to the occasion and maybe even more so. So I'm so happy for him. He's also a great guy. We're really good buddies on this team and he's just, he's just a bomb setter. So that's all I can say. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love his game. I love watching him, and I'm excited for really the rest of the world to figure out how good this guy is because he deserves it. Uh, they're going to see him in the Super Finals, and I believe they're going to see him for the Polish national team this summer, which is great news. Uh, I wanted to ask about the, yeah. the, the, the match that is the Super Finals. One match, and it, it's, it's crazy that that's the case because you know in Poland you're playing a best-of-five series. In the other Champions League rounds, it was uh, like the home and away two match aggregate thing for the entire yeah. tournament and your, your last match of the season to come down to one match how do you how do you come into that and start at a level that you know you, you don't have that much time you don't have that much time to adjust to a matchup you don't have that much time to figure out how you're playing that day it's just one match how do you handle that considering that you're so used to playing these series by now at this point in the season Oof, that's a great question. I think the first thing is understanding your opponent as best as we can, you know, in the couple of days that we're going to be able to prepare for them. And it's not about trying to stop everything from them. I think it's about a couple of assignments that we can all, um, you know, focus on and, and try to execute in that match. So if it's one to two things that we can do, the rest is about us and trying to perform what we can do, what we, what we know how to do, how we can perform. And that, I feel like that creates a better balance instead of focusing entirely on a Trento team that we don't really know. You know, we know the players, but we don't really know the team yet. So I think it'll be about some matchups, some execution, and then also which team can kind of just run their own game and, and play up to their own abilities. 
That's that's a very good point, and you'll have a couple days to dive into the matchup. But uh, yeah, the the focus on your on yourself and your own team is something that Zoxa that, like that's come across in the way that Zoxa prepares the last couple years. So I definitely get that feeling too. Yeah. An- another thing that is that that's different about this Champions League, especially versus last year, is we're going to be in Ljubljana, and there's going to be fans there. Thank goodness uh, they. We've we've missed the fans so desperately since yes. since last season. It's been great to see them come back to the domestic arenas and to some Champions League as as COVID has gone through its peaks and valleys. But I'm I'm expecting a sellout crowd in Ljubljana, and it's kind of nicely in between both Italy and Poland. So you might have uh, some some of the Zaxa yeah. home faithful be able to make the trip. What are you expecting about the crowd for this match? Oh, I'm expecting the best crowd i mean it's two of the most passionate volleyball countries in the world like you said kind of placed in between the two countries along with a turkish crowd and another italian crowd from the women's side so i think it's going to be packed i've played in that arena it's a it's a beautiful big arena that is going to be loud and i think it's going to be a great event with two really good matches I can't wait for it. I'm so excited there are going to be fans back. And yes, May 22nd, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. both the women's and the men's finals going down in Ljubljana, Slovenia. If you can be there, get tickets right now. They're still available. Uh, you, you're going to want to make make your way to Slovenia to be there for that match, if yeah. at all possible. <laughs> Uh, Eric, before we get you out of here, thank you so much for your time, by the way, with, with as busy busy as you've been yeah, of course. Playing, playing all these matches. Do you have any very early takes on the Trentino team? Now, you, you haven't done like your, your team's level of scouting on them yet, but you are a huge volleyball fan, and you know you know these players well. Matej Kaziski, Alessandro Micheletto, two great Serbian middles. Like they're, they're such a good team. They're so well-rounded. Give me your early, very early take on this Trentino roster. Well, talent, 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 right? Experience, experience, experience. I mean, they have the old and and the new who are just incredible players. I mean, Kaziski is an absolute legend and cannot be stopped at certain points. It's, it's insane. But I think I'll say that we're going to have to expect the unexpected. They, they change lineups all the time. They have two or three different opposites, two or three different systems and lineups. And somehow we're going to have to figure that out <laughs> and try to stop it um if we can stop or slow down Kaziski plus Nicoletto I think we'll have a pretty good chance but that is much easier said than done easier but said yeah again said. talent talent and experience for sure well there's no shortage of talent or experience on the Zaxa side of things <laughs> the defending champions back to the super finals in a rematch it's crazy that we have both on the men's and the women's side yeah. both rematches rematch. it's it's nuts uh different looks from both Zaxa and Trentino but I cannot wait uh, to see how that matchup yeah. goes down Sunday May 22nd in Ljubljana Slovenia or uh, here on YouTube for channel members or on Eurovolley.tv make sure you know where you can watch oh, these nice. games yeah, the uh, the YouTube channel membership is a cool thing that the CV is doing. You can pay, I think it's it's five bucks USD or maybe five euro, and get access on YouTube to all the matches, uh, like literally everything for all the super finals and bonus highlight videos and all that stuff. So if you, oh, wow. yeah, if you're interested in that, people watching, there's a join button. Join that's next to the subscribe button that you should have already pressed. Uh, hit the join button to, for the options and uh, YouTube channel membership for the CEV. And also, speaking of YouTube channels, check out Eric Shoji. His channel is awesome. Uh, it, he digs into so much volleyball from around the world. Great <laughs> great interviews with players. Uh, <laughs> Eric, you got anything cool coming up on the YouTube channel, perhaps after this season's over? Ooh, yes. I'm actually so excited to get back with my USA guys who are a little bit less camera shy than my Polish guys here. <laughs> Um, definitely some practice, some practice videos, some interviews, some, you know, breaking down film with, with players and coaches and more day in the life. So I'm, I'm really excited. I have so many ideas, so more to come. I love your channel. I think anybody watching this will love your channel. So check out Eric uh, on, on thank you, thank you. various social medias and check out Zaxa on the court. If you can watch the Plus League of Finals, do so. And you're definitely going to want to watch the finals of Champions League. Eric, thanks so much, man. Good luck these next yep. couple of weeks. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you probably in person later this summer uh, during national team season. That'll be a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, for sure. That'll be awesome. 
Thank you very much. I'm excited too. And you know, the match is what in 10 days. So hopefully everyone can tune in and watch. We're getting excited. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back next week with even more Super Finals coverage as we get even closer. We'll see you then.